and we are live again hello everybody and welcome to the dance series on dance vision with tatiana silverstova ah uh, how are you all doing look at this beautiful weather today in los angeles uh, so guys um because of so many comments because of your feedback i got so inspired and today i prepared a very very special lecture for you so as you know the topic would be uh talking about something what nobody wants to talk about and because of that today i decided to bring a special guest to the open discussion it's a person uh who some of you know very well it's a very talented person very good friend of mine and the best part of all of that is that he lives two minutes away from me so let's see who is this going to be are you guys ready are you excited so let's not forget let's see who this is hello and hey, it's everyone. max my partner hi moxie hey how are how you guys are you this doing? is my quarantine beard officially uh, how is your life during this quarantine uh, good i'm doing a lot of home stuff and please come on through thank you i'm actually here today to discuss some business with you okay business do you know the topic of today do you know the topic the topic of today what yeah of did today? you watch my facebook yeah but what's the topic of today today we will be talking about the things who nobody wants to discuss oh no oh yes so guys knowing us knowing that we always prepare something special for you and thankfully uh with your help today we're gonna create some incredible atmosphere and all of you will enjoy that so make sure to comment and to ask us questions we will answer them all at the end of the uh, lesson because right now we won't be able to do that but we will be happy to read all of them so the unusual lecture slash group class will be divided in three parts. Three parts. So whoever is going to miss first part, very bad for them. Because they're going to miss a lot. And so we're going to start with the first part of our lecture. First part of the lecture is going to be combining exercises with some tips. So we will give you five tips and five exercises. So I will be doing the tips in the first part and Tatiana will show you the exercises that she wants you to do without getting off of your chair. So if you're home right now, like everyone else is, you're quarantined, you have to stay home. We know it's difficult, but at least let's have some fun with it. Exactly. So guys, your exercise number one would be, whoever is sitting right now on the couch, great. So you're still going to do the same. Let me just adjust this a little bit. The first exercise, you're going to do still sitting. So you will be sitting on your couch or the chair, listening to the max, and at the same time doing exercise with me. We will start with rolling of the shoulders back and forward to the music, okay? I know for some of you it might be uh, difficult to yes. listen and do the exercises, but at least try. Or even if you won't do it, just listen. I'm just gonna feel stupid doing it by myself. <laughs> well, try to keep up with Tatiana. She's gonna start right now, and you do exactly what she's doing. It's a very simple exercises, and uh, try to listen to me give you a tip about this first topic. Okay, so I'm gonna put some music, not too loud. Uh, I, by the way, guys, can you hear us well? Let, let me one, let two, me know. One, two. Maybe a little low, yeah. Yeah. Give us thumbs up if it's good. So, ready? And we're gonna start with shoulders. And. So, start that exercise. And as you get into it, I wanna talk to you about doing a heel turn. All the ladies always have some issues with heel turns, so I just wanna give you some tips. Ladies, did you know that the leg, the leg that you enter in into a heel turn is also the leg you come out on? So, if you enter a reverse heel turn in Foxtrot on the right leg, you also, after the heel turn, will come out on the right leg. That's an easy way to remember because some of you ladies don't know which foot to come out on once you've closed your feet. Please see your face enough. Go feel it back. All right, how about that? So if I do it on the other leg, same thing. If I go back on the left leg and I do a heel turn and box stride or waltz, 
and I come out also on the left leg. Okay, so again, easy to remember. Also, the heel turn is always done on one foot, and it's the same foot that you go in on. So if I go in on the right, I turn on the right foot, change weight, and come out on the right foot. Again, easy to remember, and now we can switch the exercise. Ooh, how do you feel? I'm good. Um, to be honest with you, it was difficult to yeah. listen and do the okay. exercise. Okay, all right. But we're gonna challenge ourselves. So. Exercise number two. Exercise number two will have two parts. So we're gonna be picking up the feet, the heels from the ground on the toe. One, two, it's like a relevé. And on the count three, four, we will be turning the body to the right. Three, four, to work on isolation of the upper part from the lower part. And then we're gonna do exactly the same. Five, six, and to the left, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight. Can you repeat with me? Ready? One, two, three, four. I want you to get in the flow of it so you don't think about the exercise. So then after you get the flow, you can focus on listening to Maxi about his second tip. So you can start. Start going with what Tatiana is doing. So you got rotation, pick up the feet. Rotation, pick up the feet. And you can start the music and I am going to go ahead and start with tip number two. And tip number two right now, guys, is go ahead and keep up with the exercise. Tip number two is about rolling through your feet in Foxtrot. Again, second Foxtrot tip. So ladies, when you go back, it's very important that you don't move your head weight back because you get back weighted. However, if you look from this angle, my head cannot be off of my feet either. So my head has to move through my feet if you look from that angle. But if you look from profile, I cannot move my head um, earlier than my legs, otherwise I'll get back weighted. So I want to make sure that I move my, my head weight according to where my spine is. But if you look from the front, you cannot have your head hanging off of your foot trying to go backwards. Otherwise your direction will change. And that was tip number two. Thank you very much. All right. Like seriously, it's difficult. <laughs> See, it's a challenge either way you look Okay, right. now finally. We warmed up a little bit. Everybody, please stand up off your couches. Put your wine on the side. Stop and day drinking, stop day drinking. <laughs> and the next exercise for you will be again for the upper part. We spent a lot of time last time on the arms. Now it's time to awake this part. On this lecture, we're gonna be working a little bit on the upper, upper body. So I want you to curve the back backwards, bend the knees, close the center. So very curved position. And on the second beat, stretch the other direction. Close your shoulder blades on the back. And stretch the chest forward, straight the knees. And then you're gonna do the other way. One, two, three, four. And that is what you're gonna be doing right now as I give you tip number three. So Tatiana oh, will start the music. Tip number three. She's gonna start the exercise. And please go ahead and start doing exactly what she's doing in that order. And uh, now the tip number three, and that's gonna be related to tango, and this is the rock step in tango. So this rock is a bronze step in figure. Tango. When you're doing a rock step, ladies or gentlemen for that matter, if you look at the back foot, the heel should never go down when you're doing the actual rock. So when you go forward into it, and then when you rock your way back, we typically see an air, the, the back heel going down, and the person usually gets quite wobble and then it no longer becomes a rock step, it becomes some sort of a kind of a, uh, a wobble basically. So if you want to do a proper rock, the back heel will actually not go down while you soften your legs. So in tango, again, if you have quick, quick, slow, you didn't see my heel go down, I can do it also on this leg, quick, quick, slow. So it's similar to a contra check, the back heel is up. And that finishes our exercise uh now we're gonna switch actually we have right. two more tips for you two very important tips but now it's max's turn to do the exercise that's right and it's gonna be a little bit more difficult so level sure. two exercises uh show us your exercise so the exercise is very simple you're gonna sit down with a straight back so not like you typically sit down you're gonna sit down with a straight back basically a nice squat and then you're gonna straighten your feet and legs and then you're gonna go back into a 90 degree angle and stand up. And that's pretty much it. So sit back One, down straight. Two, three, three four. four. Okay, 
Off okay. you go. Okay, okay. I want to say I want I want them to start the exercise with you, and then I will uh, give them my tips. You ready, ready? guys? One, two, three, four. Oh, I will talk for a while no, now. Hurry up and go because I don't want to <laughs> okay, do this all day. Okay, so my tip. Last time we discussed uh, arm styling. Arm styling, and I actually forgot to mention one very important thing. It's the fingers. We only discussed fingers in the flamenco style, but we didn't discuss them. How do we keep them during the arm of the arm styling? So for that one, I will give you two actually tips. One is called exercise with the coin. Why? It's important. Whenever we move our hands, we always want to make sure that my middle finger and the thumb, they are together. So for those of you who are not used to this position in the hands, in the fingers, you will take a coin, you will place it here. Yeah, Max, keep going, keep going. Yeah, get to the end of it already, I'm done. So you, you, uh, holding it here, you uh, you hold it with your thumb, middle and the thumb, the inside. All other fingers, they have their own lines. And that's how you're gonna use your fingers in any arm styling you do. So it can be classical, swinging arms, and whatever. So for ladies, they usually suggest that hold. For the guys, another exercise, it's called cigar exercise. So you're gonna hold, usually we hold cigars with two fingers. So. You can use the pen. Maxi says that always his index finger and his middle finger, they are slightly close. The other fingers, they, they have their own lines and the thumb is also always inside. So that's a gentleman way of doing it. Actually, sometimes as a lady, I not always hold them together. Sometimes they have very open positions, but guys, as Max suggests, you can you can close it like that. So okay, one, that's it. Two. I'm gonna be sore tomorrow. <laughs> okay, stop, stop, All and right, you stop. stop. Woo. Good job. Do you want some juice? No, no, I'm good. I'm you good. know what? If you choose that exercise. It's yes, not but not for five minutes. Okay, so that was the tip for your fingers. Now we're moving to the last exercise and the last tip because we have so many other things to do with you today. So okay. guys, the exercise is also very simple. You sit back, relax, make sure you have a glass of wine in your right hand, and then you basically do the scissor exercise until Tatiana finishes okay. her topic. Good luck. Okay, so guys, very quickly, I wanna discuss the contraction of the upper part in the explosion lines. What I see a lot, what's happening on the floor, that when you get to any explosion lines, you get to the final position too soon. So instead of developing it through the count one, two, three, all of you getting there on one and just hold it for count two and three. And it looks that you're not timing it correctly. So what's important that you have to close the center on count one. On count two, you have to get the vertical line in your body, so no angles yet. And on number three, you can actually explore that explosion line by rotating the body and giving that picture. But it should happen if we talk about the walls, only on count three, not on count one. Or if we talk about the fog shot, the final destination of the picture, explosion line, which should happen on count three, four. I will repeat it one more time again. So contract the center in as you step backwards. One. If it's fox shot, still on count two, the center is closed. And only on three, four open. In the walls would be one, two, three. Here we go. Thank goodness. Okay, good, good, good. All Let's right. Let's stop this music a little bit. So everybody, well, how do you feel? Please give us some comments, some juice for you. Oh, thank you. Cheers. You can now drink oh. some water and sit down back to listen mm. to us a little bit. <laughs> oh. So happy to see you. Actually. It's not only juice. Just saying. Why do you think it's 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 so it's so loud? It's only here. Okay. All right. So moving on to the um, second half of our video, uh, we are coming to you live, of course, as you can see. Um, no, the main part of the lecture. No special effects here. Um, we wanted to ask 
or put the questions out there that nobody really wants to ask or they want to ask but it, you know they could be embarrassing or they could be personal or they just could be inappropriate maybe that's why we're gonna ask them and I'm pretty sure 80% of you whoever is watching right now you guys had those situations for sure even we had it of course so let's get to question so we prepared one. four flashcards four flashcards and four questions so I'm gonna pick one and this question again is for both of us we might answer it differently we might answer it similarly it doesn't matter so we it's didn't not, discuss that which so. yeah we did not we wanted it to be exactly uh, live so okay so question number one everybody listen very carefully why is dancing competitions with my teacher is so expensive mm. very good question yes I think I, I've heard this question a couple times myself I've heard it in the industry uh, obviously from the students um, well what do you think about that uh, why it's so expensive yeah. um, I think partially because we the professionals who are taking their careers to the top top level we spend a lot day by day by taking lessons with our coaches by traveling by um, through I think since what since I was eight um, my mom spent pretty much every other dollar on those lessons uh, getting me to the level um, where I have a certain information in the back and uh, in order for me to pay back I don't know <laughs> in order for me to survive I also have to teach you guys uh, so of course uh, especially when we start teaching we don't charge as much I remember my first lesson which I was teaching uh, would cost $30 wow. but again in order for me to take lessons that time with my teacher I would have to uh, do 10 lessons in order to pay back so obviously at some point when you um, grow up uh, and you you get to the good level as a professional dancer you should raise your your price uh, otherwise we would never have this uh, how, how to say the the like, uh, the, like, the a stairs, ladder, like, like a ladder like a ladder stairs of the levels and the teachers with a different uh, um, with a different knowledges so if you really go for uh, information if you really want to learn from the champions who spend uh, all their time and dedicated all, all, all their lives um, I think it's it's kind of uh, worth it to pay for it because we don't do anything else in life uh, that's that's how we make right. a living uh, it's I think it's more appropriate for you because you do a lot of a proam and yeah. uh, you get that question most of the time no? I get that question uh, I get the, uh, people think about that question they never some of them never ask me but you could tell they're thinking it or when I tell somebody my fee for a competition they you know you could tell that that question <laughs> is there so I think uh, I always compare it to you know how much would it cost uh, someone a golfer to play golf uh, with Tiger Woods or how much would it cost a basketball uh, a young basketball player or, or an amateur basketball player to play with you know Shaquille O'Neal or somebody that they uh, think is extremely good at what they do we're very similar in our industry. Uh, a lot of us are at the top of, uh, of our industry. And uh, I think that to be able to touch a, a, a person who has chiseled their body and who has, you know, perfected their techniques so that they can actually make you feel uh, safe and secure on the floor and lead you uh, on the competition, that's, um, I don't even know if there is a particular price for that. It's like, uh, you know, I guess it's like real estate. It, it's, uh, it's whatever people will pay. So if you know the house next door is three million dollars, then if somebody pays for it, then it's three million dollars. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of uh, you know not not putting anyone down, but we have in our industry a lot of people that get paid different amounts. Absolutely. We also have people that have very different skills that get paid the same amount, which is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. So you can have a lot of pro am teachers on the floor, and if you if you knew it, you would see that each one of them gets paid a different amount, even though we're doing the same job. So mm -hmm. that may be uh, a question that you might want to think about further on and a topic that you may explore later on. Yeah. What do you guys think? Yeah, think about that. Is it worth it? Time. Is it worth it to pay him $350 for a 15 minutes less? <laughs> right. Something ridiculous like that. You know, where is the limit? You know, that's what we should be. 
uh, noting. Okay, great. Good. Next okay. question. Next one. No, but that no one really wants to ask. For you, because I don't want to answer that. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. What do you do if you have feelings towards your teacher? Mm. And we're not talking about the teacher, uh, your pro-am teacher. It can be your pro-am teacher, but sometimes when you're a professional couple, you also can have feelings towards your main coach. Exactly. Or a teacher that you don't take lessons with, but they are in the studio. And you have, you know, yeah. you may have feelings for a person who's teaching at the studio. Good question, huh? So can you repeat that one more time, please? So, what do you do if you have feelings towards your teacher? Okay, it says towards your teacher. So, okay, let's let's focus on people that are teaching you. It could be your pro-am or your teacher that teaches you in a couple. So, I go first. Yeah, first of uh, all. <laughs> well, I think we're, we're all human, obviously, and at this point, gender is no longer specific to male and female. Uh, we may have um, male to male feelings, uh, female to female feelings, and obviously male to female. Um, but I think it's completely normal and natural, especially if you admire and respect the individual that's teaching you. I think sometimes we've had situations where relationships have begun and actually some famous people in our industry have ended up having real lives together and marriages, uh, one being the student and the other one being their teacher. And eventually those two individuals, uh, you know, had a family, some had kids. So it's happened before. It's not so you a, would say go for it? I would Hit say, on your I, would say on your I would say, obviously, <laughs> if, if you're going to talk about it, do it in a non-dance uh, environment. Don't do it in front of your partner or in the studio, probably, if you want to take the person for, you know, a drink or a, a coffee or, or lunch. I think that would be a, more appropriate to doing it. I don't know how that goes with the teacher. I've never had anybody do that to me, so I don't even know how I would react to that. Oh, bullshit. So, Just a bullshit. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on the person. <laughs> okay. Um, next question. How do you behave on a private lesson when you're bored and not interested in information? Okay, so... So that... how many of you had that? I, can, can you just leave the comments uh, the... Thumbs yes, up. thumbs up. Uh, thumbs up. If you, if Did you, you ever that? have that? Oh, yes. Okay, so. Did you? No. Oh, shit. <laughs> no, no, I always, uh, I, I, I always try to see what, what people are trying to tell me and try to find something in it. Uh, but I have a, I think for me, it feels disrespectful to, to kind of zone out, even though I, I have, like, I can't listen. I just can't. I, I have a problem in group classes, much more. Privates, no. But mm -hmm. group classes, I have a hard time focusing. So, so I will, I will guys tell you a story. Uh, it happened to us a couple years ago. We were on the lesson with the Ruud Vermeer. Who doesn't know Ruud Vermeer? He is a psychologist uh, for the ballroom dancers, and he trained many, many champions. And um, we were discussing with him the problem of why we can't get the first place. We wanted to be champions and we thought we have a full package. And uh, he listened to everything what we told him and then he asked us one question. He's, he asked us, and how do you take private lessons? We're like, what do you mean, how do we take private lessons? We go for a lesson, we pay the teacher, get the information, we're trying to, to do it well and then we leave, he goes. And are you taking your lessons as like you do it right now? We're like, Yes, like we listen to you. He's like, no, and that's your problem. He goes, you guys don't know how to take lessons. Number one rule, yes, you are coming to that lesson, but you also want to make sure that the other person is taking a positive energy from you. You have to be hungry for the information. And of course, every single person uh, gets information differently. Some of you are better listening. Some of you better when the person shows you the information, but the person who is giving you the lesson, he doesn't know that. So it might be a good lesson for him and horrible lesson for me, but it's not the teacher's fault. Right. It's your fault because you don't know how to receive that information correctly. So he said, if you really want to succeed in this world, obviously that lesson is a part of making the connection with the person. And you never know if that judge 
is gonna be judging you on your main competition and that mark would be the mark which will make you a champion. So obviously you can be impatient, but most importantly you have to really try and find at least one thing which can be useful for you, even if it's super boring for you and you really don't get to the point. Ask them questions because they're already there they're already spending their time on you and it keeps you engaged as well exactly and then it, it really i think since that day i personally completely changed my approach to uh how i take private lessons not how i give how i take and that was very important so that was our our experience and uh one day you see my, my mind just blow up <laughs> okay uh last question uh, again for both of us what do you do if your mind goes blank during the competitions mm -hmm. I had it so many times especially when I was younger I would do my pasta doble and then second half I don't remember my routine totally <laughs> and then it just starts so so so, um, so what did you do ah uh, first of all felt horrible the worst thing you can do is to panic Start panicking and, and moving your partner all over the places. That's the worst thing you can do. So their concentration. Is that what you did? Yes, okay. <laughs> I learned my mistakes. Okay. Good. Uh, number one, it's the focus with the eyes. You have to see your partner in that moment because he probably remembers the routine better than you. Hopefully remembers. <laughs> if both goes blank, I don't know what to do. But if it's just you. Try to not uh, play around and improvise on the spot. Yes, you will improvise by looking at your partner and trying to match whatever he does. And uh, if he is good enough, he will lead you. So it's one of the moments where you have to trust your partner instead of just doing it. Ha, I know what to do, let, let me show you. Um, so for pro am especially, you no, know, it's it would be uh, yeah. The girl it comes up, we come across a lot of times. We watch students compete, and we know for a fact that <laughs> they're going blank. We could tell it's not the step that's supposed to be there. Or I'm dancing with a student, and she forgot her steps. Just not because she doesn't remember. It's just just something else got her attention. Distractions. She lost Too focus. many distractions. Yeah, somebody in the audience waved at her or whatnot. So it's normal. But we just, uh, we're just we curious to see how we can deal with it. So in my opinion, I would say, like you said, stay calm, find focus right away as much as possible. And don't do too many movements because if you're a student, your teacher is probably trying to lead you during that moment to, the, to do the right steps. So if you're moving around too much and you're turning in the opposite direction where he wants you to turn, it just makes it difficult for us, the yeah. teachers. Yeah. And what if the teacher forgot the routine? <laughs> well, I think you should fire your teacher what? if it happens more than three times. Ah. I think it's, it's three strikes in. Because we also people, we gotta forget yeah, stuff. Yeah, I've forgotten, I've, for, I've had like five or six students on a competition and you have all five or six different routines because that's how I think it should be. Each girl is different. And uh, I have done the wrong routine with the wrong girl. It has happened, but I, uh, I quickly <laughs> found focus and uh, looked at her and thought, um, I don't want to get fired. So. so you didn't improvise on the spot? I did not improvise, no. I just calmly kind of continued on dancing, but I had, I, I had to take a few seconds and focus. So that was the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was our five questions. So dear friends, what we would like you to do next is uh, think of your question, unusual question. I don't know, it can be, uh, what to do when your partner smells or... Uh, Basically any... things that, that people are not going to typically talk about, but yeah. we will. And, and all of those things, they really happen in the, our uh, dance life. So leave them in the comments and right after the lesson, we're going to read all of them and we will pick best two questions. Best two nasty questions. And uh, probably next lecture, or we will answer them at the beginning of it, or maybe we will just tape a separate video. We will read the questions and we will answer them. So we in, we have a separate post for that. But I really want you to think of something interesting and, and find out uh, what people um, 
which problems people have actually sure. nowadays. Let's talk about it. Uh, now, da -da -da -da, the third part of our lecture, uh, knowing us, knowing I, not us, you guys uh, should expect everything, right? Uh, we always like to uh, improvise as well. And uh, it actually was Max's idea to do this last part. Do you guys remember when we had a year or two years ago a challenge of dancing with a glass of water or a glass yeah, of wine? Yeah. When everybody was standing in front of the camera, dancing a little bit, and the point was to not uh, spill the water. So are we gonna do it now with a glass of juice? No, oh. no, okay. today we're going we created for a new challenge, super cool new challenge, and it's called Strip Dance Challenge. Strip, Strip Dance, Dance Challenge. challenge. Okay, so, so um, it's not what you think. It's not what you think. It's not what you think, and we need just a couple uh, seconds uh, to prepare. So while I'm preparing, Maxi, can you give us yes. the rules? So, okay. Rule number one. So rule number one is that you choose a song that has eight beats in a phrase. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then just repeats like that. It could be any song, something popular, whatever. So you take that and you do four steps in any direction that you like. So it could be one, two, three, tap, one, two, three, tap, forward, two, three, tap, back, two, three, tap. I can mm -hmm. tap behind, I can tap in front. Again, one, two, three, tap behind. One, two, three, tap behind. One, two, three, tap in front. Doesn't matter, so we're looking for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, here comes the actual most important part, <laughs> is that within an eight of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you have to remove one article of your clothing, <laughs> okay? Not accessories, so no watches, no belts, Clothing, uh, scarves are okay, hat is okay, socks are okay. So the question is, can you coordinate this during the actual dancing with the music and take off one piece of clothing and do it in a creative way? Exactly. So the point is to do it in a creative way, not just to throw something off of you, okay? And whoever does it the best. The, so us and Dance Vision, we will choose three winners. Whoever does it the best is going to receive a special prize from waiting. Sorry, <laughs> so, Wayne. Sorry, Wayne. I know you're watching. I know you don't expect that. But uh, that's what you get with us. All so right. we are ready. Uh, we prepared a cool song. You can use the same song. You can choose your own. Now, remember the rules, yes? Eight beats. Eight beats. One piece, one of, piece clothing. of clothing. So coordination and improvisation. And when you feel you're done taking the clothes off and you don't want to go any further, then you're done. Maybe some people will go further, So, but let's keep this nice and clean. Let's make sure that people don't go too far with it. You can put as much clothing on you as you like. This is just an oh, example. Yeah, you have more. Okay, we'll take this piece too. There you go. All right, so. I hate to lose, guys. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to win you. Here we go, that's fine. I can't believe it, we're doing it live. I can't live, believe it. Live, no breaks. We're doing strip dance. No different camera angles, just as is. Okay. So, music is on. Let's see. Is it? <laughs> okay, guys. Hopefully you can hear this, yes? Okay, so Tatiana will start and she will... I so, will four steps. Step. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 Let's see, you won, you won, you won, you won. Round two, we'll come up at some point later. Okay, guys. So. We, oh my God. This was great. So what we did was, what did we do? We did some exercises in the beginning. At the yeah, same let's time. Review. Let's, let's review tips. actually the information. For those of you who couldn't coordinate 
at the beginning, the listening part and exercise part. Max, you repeat, please. Uh, what was the first exercise? The, first, turn. the first exercise was, well, the first tip was the heel turn. So going in on the same leg and going out was the heel turn. Second tip was foxtrot moving through your feet. And third tip was a check, uh, a rock step in tango. Yeah, can you quickly show us the heel turn again? Yeah, so, so heel turn, you go back on your right foot, you do the heel turn on one foot and come out on your right foot and also go back on your left and come out on your left. In uh, rolling through the feet, we wanted to make sure that your head, so if you can bring the camera up, <laughs> the head stays going through the feet rather than going off the feet and make sure that the head doesn't actually leave the step, otherwise you'll start to release your toes too quickly. Finally, the rock step in tango. The back heel does not go down when you do the rock. This is the wrong way to do it. With the heel going down, you're gonna start to rock way too much. Yeah, and I talked about the fingers that we hold the fingers the middle and the thumb together all the time where we don't want to see these positions when you um, dance and second thing i talked about the uh, explosion lines that i would like to see a contraction of your center at the beginning of that line before you rotate the body so those were the five tips uh, second part was about the questions. Uh, please remember to send us your questions so we can pick the best two and answer. And third, let's uh, start the challenge by um, having fun uh, taking off clothes. Do it creatively. Don't just take it off. Find a cool way to do it. Yes, uh, so we should have practiced that actually. Anyways, thank you very much for joining us today. And if you would like to see Max on my next uh, lecture, please share your video, this video, not your video, my video, this video, so we can hit 20,000. I promise you, if we hit 20,000 views, I'm gonna bring him next time. <laughs> oh, it depends on that. Uh, but, and by the way, um, on uh, my Instagram page, every other day, like, Every two days I do uh, interviews with the famous dancers and we're talking about their personal life. It's called Beyond the Interview. And uh, prepare your questions for those people. All the information is in my stories and also on a Facebook. And if you didn't sign to uh, Instagram and you, you don't join my page, please do it now. We had a wonderful time with you. Please stay stay. Somebody said stay safe. Stay safe and uh, practice whatever we Guys, just did with you. This quarantine will last for a little bit, so hang in there, stay positive, and keep your body moving because that's what we want to leave you with. Uh, don't get depressed or sad. This will all come to an end, and we will all be back in our studios and at the competitions. Yeah. We love you. Bye-bye. Cool.